My absolute favorite function at the moment in Sheets is the if function. It's very handy. It can be useful for working with numeric data as well as when looking at lists of text. So I wanted to show you guys some tips for getting started with the if function. First off, it's important to know what the parts of the if function are. The function always has three parts. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to type that in if. So first you have your criteria. Then you need to tell the function, well, what happens if the criteria is true? And then you have to tell the function what happens if it's false. Oops, that's so not false. So there we go. So when it, you are using the if function, you need to be thinking about those three things. If this thing happens, then do this. If this thing doesn't happen, then give me this. So I'm going to show you a couple examples of where you can use this, as well as how to nest if functions together. So here I have my simple if function set up. I have some Girl Scouts and the number of cookies they bought. If I were uh, the leader of a troop, I might want to know how many girls have met my goal of a certain number of cookies. So let's say the goal is to sell at least 20, 25 boxes. So basically I want to say, okay, which of these scouts have met the goal and which of these scouts have not? So I want to put a check mark by the ones who have met their goal. So basically, I'm going to be looking for the cells in column C that reach that goal. So to do that, I'm going to type equals if. Now you can see that it gives me some good uh, summaries of what exactly I am looking for, and it tells me again, there's that criteria. Here's what happens if it's true. Here's what happens if it's false. So I want to know if the number of cookies, that's in C33 in this row, is um, greater than or equal to 25. If that happens, they met their goal, right? So if that happens, I want them to output a X. So I'm going to put an X in the, parent or the quotes so that I know it outputs a text. Then I also need to tell it what happens when it's false. If you don't put this part in, it will just display the word false for you. So if you have something particular you want to show, you'll need to put that in. If you want it to show up just blank, my little trick is to use quotes with nothing inside of them, and then it will put nothing in that cell. So now I'm saying if it's greater than or equal to 25, then put an X. So I say, yay, that scout met her goal. If it's not, then you're going to put nothing. So then I'll see, oh, it's blank. That means they still need to meet the goal. So I'm going to close that. And this person did not meet their goal, so it doesn't say anything at all. That's good, right? I can drag this function down so that it applies to all the different scouts. Dragging it down. And you can see that some X's popped up. So here's Scout 2. Scout 2 sold 36 cookies. So Scout 2, she has met her goal. She's good to go. Scout, two, uh, there's another Scout 2. I'm not sure why I have two of them, but Scout 2 number 2 also met her goal. We keep going down further and further. You can see, and you can compare against the numbers. If it was greater than or equal to 25, then there was an X. If it was not, then it was blank. So now you're probably thinking, well, maybe I want something else that says, oh no, they didn't meet their goal. Or maybe I want to see how many people are further along towards their goal. So that's going to require us to use nested if functions. So I have another example for that. My nested if function is related to animals and sounds. What it means to be nested is that I'm going to make an if function and then I'm going to put another if function inside of that if function. I'll show you this example. So here I have some animals, cat, dog, cow, rabbit, and duck. So 
So basically, if I were making this calculator for animal sounds, if it outputs cat, I want it to output, or if it, the input is cats, if someone selects cat from the drop down, more on that in another video that is already posted, uh, I want it to say meow. If the output is dog, I want it to say arf. If the output is cow, I want it to say moo. If the output is rabbit, I want it to say nothing. And if the output is duck, I want it to say quack. So here's what we need to think about. We need to first check to see if it's cats. If cat is true, our output is meow. But if cat is not true, we need to check to see if it's dog. And then again, if dog is true, we want arf as our output. If dog is not true, that means that cat and dog weren't true, so now cow is the next one, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to show you how that would look in a nested if function. So remember that when you're using the if function, you first start with your criteria. And my criteria in this case is cat first. So if that cell equals cat, then I want it to come out with meow. Now normally the next part is what happens if it's false. But I'm not ready to be totally done and say nothing's there. If it's false, I want it to have another if function. So I want it to say, hey, oh, that was false. Check to see if it's dog. So now I'm going to type if again. And again, you're going to be able to do the same options. If a4 equals dog, then I want it to output arf. And then the third part is the false part. If it's not dog, we still have more animals to check, so we need to do another if function. This is the if function for cow. So if a84 equals cow, then the output is moo. If it's false, we move on to rabbit, right? So if a84 is rabbit, then we want nothing to output. So that's my little shortcut with quote quote, because rabbits don't make any sounds. And then the last thing I wanted to check for was duck, so that's my if duck here. A84 equals duck, then, oops, I want it to say quack. Now, if it does not equal duck, that means it does not equal rabbit, which means it does not equal cow, which means it does not equal dog, which means it does not equal cat. So now I'm ready for my final false uh, option. And in this case, it's showing me that the output would be false. Remember I said if you don't put anything, it will output false. If I want something else to output, I have to include that there. So I'm going to put something else. I'm going to say no animal. Now I have a bunch of functions and I need to close all those functions. Watch as you type in those parentheses. It will show you which parentheses it's associated with. So I see I still need one more and now I'm ready to go. So wow, that was huge. Let's see if this stuff is actually true. So I'm going to select rabbit. There's nothing. Okay, let's choose cow. The output was moo. Now let's choose duck. Quack. Now you don't have to have a drop down in this cell. You can have it be an input that someone types in. I just thought drop down would be easier to get to the heart of what I wanted to show you, which were the nested if functions. If you ever need to go in and alter those functions, it does a really good job of highlighting things that are related to each other. And you can also select particular functions and it will show you what the output is if just that function is applied, which makes it pretty handy to troubleshoot your functions, which I found when we were making encoders with my kids last year. So that's the if function and the nested if function. Really, it's playing around with those before you get any further. However, I did want to show you one other if function, and that is the if error function. 
So the if error function deals with what happens when there is an error message. So here I have a simple example with a numerator, denominator, and a percentage. So we know that we're going to divide to find the percentage. So normally I would have my percentage be equals that divided by that. And it gives me this error. It says divided by zero. I can't divide by zero. So, so what I want to do is I want to use a little trick that shows that to not that has that not happen. I know nothing's there. It's blank. So I don't want it to be an error like that. Watch what happens if it's not an error. By my numerator is 4, my denominator is 8. It gives me my percentage. Doesn't look like a percentage, but again, we can change that up in the format option. So delete those again, and it's yelling at me. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the if error function. So I'm going to click in my cell and I'm going to start typing if error. So you can see the if error function type comes up. First it says the value. So it wants you to put in what is the error, the error value, what is the, the thing that's going to show up. So if it's not an error, I want it to be that. That's the thing that I want there, the divided by. But if it is an error, I want it to show up blank. So I'm going to use those two quotes again. Then we have it. So now, technically, it is an error, but it's not showing up because I said, hey, show up blank. If it's not an error, let's do 6 divided by 8. It shows up as my percentage. It does that first calculation. So the if error function is not entirely necessary, but it's kind of nice for when you do not want to see that really gross, ugly, divided by zero thing in a sheet that may not have any inputs in it yet. It's a good idea to play around with the if functions a little bit more and again, practice going, what is the criteria I want and what is the final output I want. For nested if functions, I'm going to scroll back up to that. It sometimes is a good idea to write each if function out separately and then paste them all into your compiled function when you're ready to go. So that's how you can get started with if functions. They are very, very useful and can make your sheets work a lot more efficient.